Welcome to MAT2LB booklet number two, Estimating and Making Change. Lesson number one, Estimating. So this unit, booklet number two, is an extension of a lot of the rounding uh, that we did in our first booklet. Um, we're going to look at it in the context of money in this lesson. So let's have a look at example number one. Estimate the amount of change you would get back for each of these purchases. So our first purchase six dollars and ninety one cents let's round that to the nearest dollar so we're looking for the dollar place value which is our six we look to the digit that comes after it or to the right of our digit that we want to round to and nine forces us to round up so our nearest dollar is going to be seven dollars the amount you give a cashier the next column is $10. So our estimated change from the cashier will be the difference between what we give the cashier and what is our estimated cost going to be. And the difference between $10 and $7 is $3. So that will be our estimated change from our cashier. Now let's take a look. We'll repeat this process for our second purchase. Our second purchase is $13.49. Again, we're looking to round to the nearest dollar. So there is the dollars or ones. We look to the digit to the right or after it to see how we round. A four requires us to round down, which means keeping it the same. So our nearest dollar value in this case is going to be 13. So there's our nearest dollar. We give our cashier $20. So our estimated change from $20 is the difference between what we give and what we think we're going to be paying. So we thought that was going to be approximately $13. The difference between 20 and 13 is $7. So there's a number of things at play here. First, we round the amount of our purchase to the nearest dollar. And then we subtract our estimated amount of purchase from whatever we give the cashier. So at this point, I'd like you to hit pause. And I'd like you to try the next one on your own. When you've got it, come back. and We'll see how you did. OK, you've come back. 32, 34. We're going to round that to the nearest dollar. Dollars, of course. The two, we look to. The digit after to see how we round, we are going to round down or keep the same, which means we are going to estimate our cost at $32. We give our cashier $40. The difference between $40 and $32 is going to be $8. Hopefully you did that correctly and remembered all the steps. Again at this point, now you're rolling. Let's hit pause again and try 2254. We'll see how we do with that one. When you're done, come on back. Okay, you've come back. We are going to round 2254 to the nearest dollar. That means this two right here. We look to the digit after it. The five forces us to round up, so we are going to have $23 approximately. We give the cashier 25, the estimated change is the difference between them. $25 we give, the $23 estimate is going to give us approximately $2 in change. Moving on, in the next portion of this video we are going to look at a grocery store flyer. So it's been summarized here, I'll just sort of circle it really quickly. We've got something like a grocery store flyer here that's got some items on it as well as their respective prices. We're going to try to estimate, uh, as a part of this, um, we're going to try to estimate the change. In order to do this, we're going to actually take this flyer and add it up. So example number two, John buys some items at the grocery store. We're going to complete John's bill. So John's bill is over here, partly finished. We've got orange juice set in at 88 cents and we're going to fill in the rest. So we are going to look through and we're going to fill these items in. I'd like you to go ahead and do that now, so hit pause. When you're done filling in John's video, um, John's grocery list, come on back. Okay, you've come back and you've filled these items in. There's the six pack of water for $2.88. There's the 
there's the ketchup for two dollars and ninety seven cents and there's the lettuce for seventy five cents so let's write some of these things down we've got two dollars eighty eight we've got two dollars ninety seven and we've got seventy five cents for our lettuce so we have completed John's bill. Part B, we're going to calculate John's total by adding up each item. So we didn't do a lot of this in the first unit. Um, what we're going to be doing here is addition. So we are going to add these all together to come up with a total. The way that we do this is we are going to add this entire rightmost column vertically. So we're going to add that up first. So we'll do a little bit of mental math. 8 plus 8 will give us 16, plus 7 will give us 23, plus another 5 will give us 28. So we put our 8 down and we carry our 2. Next thing we're going to do in our vertical addition is we are going to add all of the digits in this second tenths column, including that 2 that we carried forward. So we'll get a little bit of mental math. We have our 2 plus 8 gives us 10, plus another 8 gives us 18, plus another 9 gives us 27, plus another 7 gives us 34. So 4 we put down. There's our decimal, and the three, again, we carry forward. Last step, vertically, to add these, we add all of the numbers in the ones column. Again, including that three that we carried forward. So we have our three carried forward, plus our two is five, plus another two is going to be seven dollars. So our grand total for John's bill is $7.48. So, so far, we have completed John's bill and we have added up each item without a calculator. We used mental math. Now, if you found this challenging, it would be an appropriate time to go and talk to your teacher and get some extra sheets on vertical addition if you're struggling with it. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with using a calculator to check it, but being able to perform mental arithmetic quickly is an important skill. So if John gives the cashier $10, estimate the amount of change that he should get back. So if we are going to estimate, what we want to do is round what our actual total is to the nearest dollar. So $7.48. I'd like you now to hit pause, round that to the nearest dollar when you got it. Come on back. Okay, hopefully you recognize that $7.48 will be rounded to $7.48. Dollars. So our estimated amount of change will be the $10 that John gives the cashier minus the $7 estimate that he owes for his groceries, which will give us approximately $3 that we should get back. The last step we're going to do in this lesson is find out how much actual change John will get back. And there's a hint, if we recall at the very end of the last booklet, if we're dealing with bills that are being paid in cash, we have to remember to round the actual total to the nearest nickel. So let's start with that. $7.48. Let's round this to the nearest nickel. So as you remember, that 8 is closer to rounding up to the nearest 0 than rounding down to the closest 5. So we are going to end up with $7.50 sense is what we are actually going to have. So if we are going to figure out how much change John actually gets back, we are going to subtract vertically. So John has $10 that he gives the cashier. And we are going to subtract that $7.50 that John actually owes. At this point, I'd like you to do some vertical subtraction. So complete this. And if you think you've got it right, come on back and we'll see how you did. Okay, you've completed the vertical subtraction. Let's do that now. Again, we're doing this in columns from right to left. So here's our first column that we are going to subtract. 0 minus 0 gives us a 0. From this, we're going to do a little bit of borrowing because we have 0 minus 5, and that doesn't really work. So we are going to borrow from this 10 over here and make this a 9. We have borrowed 1, so 10 this 10 right here, subtract 
5 is going to give us 5. And now we have 9 minus 7, which gives us $2.50. So John's actual change that he gets back is going to be $2.50. And this is the end of our first lesson in booklet number two. Hopefully this material um, is making sense to you. If not, now's a good time to go back and review parts of the video. And if you're rocking, time to head on to the worksheet. And then we'll see you in lesson number two.